Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy to support H.R. 8333, the Biosecure Act. This bipartisan, bicameral bill prevents U.S. tax dollars from flowing to biotechnology companies that are owned, operated, and controlled by China or other foreign adversaries. Specifically, this bill names five genomic companies with direct ties to the Chinese Communist Party as biotechnology companies of concern. The bill then prohibits a federal agency from procuring any biotechnology equipment or service from such companies. The most ironic thing about this approach is this is how they do things in China. The PRC politicians decide they don't like you, so they blackball you. Guess what? That's not how we do things in the United States of America. We ought to have due process of law here. We ought to have a transparent, inclusive process that involves all the relevant agencies that applies to all companies. Let me be crystal clear. If a thorough interagency review concludes that any of these named companies, including the one in my district, are engaged in behavior that endangers our national security or violates people's privacy, I will be the first to say, shut them down. But without that process, again, this is how they do things in China. It shouldn't be how we do things in the United States. So I strongly urge a no vote, and I pledge that if this bill is defeated, or if, the, if my friends pull it, I will proudly work to come up with, better, with a better bill that will actually get the job done and not create a slippery slope that we should not be going down. The companies named in this legislation create significant risk to U.S. national security. BGI, one of the named entities, is a CCP biotechnology company and is the world's largest collector of genetic data. BGI, alongside its subsidiaries, which are also named in the bill, have been found to conduct research alongside the Chinese military. Wu Xi, through its two subsidiaries named in the bill, operates genetic testing centers established in coordination with the CCP, helps carry out research to promote the Chinese military, and has reportedly stolen U.S. firms' intellectual property. The House Oversight Committee has worked hard with outside stakeholders and other committees of jurisdiction to ensure these national security risks are meaningfully addressed without disrupting medical and pharmaceutical supply chains. The bill also exempts biotechnology equipment and services from the bill's prohibitions that were, but, no, but are no longer, produced or provided by a company of concern. This bill is a necessary step toward protecting American sensitive healthcare data from the CCP before these companies become more embedded in the U.S. economy, university systems, and federal contracting base. Mr. Speaker, I deeply regret having to rise in opposition to this bill, uh, but I feel that I need to, and I want to be clear as to why. I think this bill is currently written, uh, quite frankly, is not ready for prime time. And I'm urging our colleagues, particularly those who care about effectively taking on China, to vote no. Mr. Speaker, for the record, th I'm not new to this issue. In fact, I welcome the fact that we're finally here on the House floor talking about not only the abysmal human rights violations committed by the People's Republic of China, but their unsavory and unscrupulous business practices that could threaten patient privacy and even our national security. And frankly, it's about damn time. I've been sounding the alarm for years now, asking Democrats and Republicans to hold China accountable. I've worked with presidents of both parties on this issue, including Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Along with our colleagues, Representative Chris Smith and Senator Marco Rubio, I wrote and President Biden signed into law the bipartisan Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act to hold the PRC accountable for their genocide in Xinjiang and prevent the import of goods made with forced labor into the United States. Together, Chairman McCall and I wrote the Resolve Tibet Act to hold the PRC accountable for their misinformation on Tibet, which was also just signed into law by President Biden a few months ago. I passed into law the Bipartisan Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act to deny PRC officials entry into the United States if they are responsible for the oppression of the people of Tibet. And in 2019, I also authored legislation to prevent the export of crowd control equipment that was being used to go after peaceful protesters in Hong Kong, and President Trump signed that into law. And I'm one of the few members of Congress who was actually sanctioned by China. I'm banned from going to China by the PRC. I can't meet with any 
uh, Chinese government officials because of my vocal advocacy for human rights and human dignity in that country. They clearly do not like me, but I wear their sanctions as a badge of honor. All of this is to say that my record on this issue takes a back seat to nobody. And that is why I deeply regret that we are bringing this particular bill to the floor. This is a lost opportunity to do something meaningful about an important and serious issue, an issue that frankly deserves a lot more thought and attention than this. First, first of all, the bill lists out specific companies that it claims are exploiting the U.S. biopharmaceutical industry on behalf of the Chinese government. To be totally frank, some of them might be. But to be also totally frank, some of them might not, might not be. And I can't get a clear answer from anyone on how the select committee came up with these names. What was the process? Were these companies brought in for questioning? Um, again, no solid answers to why these companies and not others. If we're going to name companies, there ought to be a clear, transparent process that is implemented the same for all companies. I'm even told by our regulatory agencies, who, by the way, do not like the idea of naming companies by name in legislation, because they think it gives the he heads up to bad companies um, who will try to evade this legislation as written by changing their name and reincorporating as something else in the Cayman Island. So I think we need to give some thought as to whether this is the best way to hold these companies to account. We have an intelligence community. We have law enforcement agencies. We have an interagency entity list. We, and we have a DOD 1260H list to determine what companies are engaged in bad behavior on behalf of the PRC. Some of the companies listed in this bill are not on any list at all. So it's up to us to guess why they're on here. Now, I have no idea who wrote this text or why these companies are not others, but this is not the right way to legislate. Uh, this is being jammed through because, I guess it's China week, um, and God forbid we wait a couple of more weeks and get this right, but we want to get this thing done, but this is not the way we should be doing things around here. And what's even worse is that this bill is being brought up under suspension. I mean, people know that there are genuine concerns about this bill, um, and yet it's being brought up under suspension. Uh, so we have no opportunity to amend it or to make improvements. No process through the Rules Committee. No amendments. Nothing. I mean, believe me when I say I really, really believe we could get to yes on a bill to hold bad companies accountable and to protect the American people. I think we could get yes to a bill that would not only have my support, but the support of everybody in this chamber. This is just take it or leave it. And I think the best thing for all of us to do is to leave it and go back to the drawing board and to come up with something better. Uh, that we can get to the floor in the next several days, in the next couple of weeks. Look, I've spent my entire career standing up to the Chinese Communist Party and to the PRC, and I have the battle scars to prove it. And yes, I do. I do have a company in my district that is actually named this, in this bill. But that's not the only reason why I'm here. I'm here because I care about these issues. I have cared about these issues for a long time. And yes, I did my due diligence on the company in my district and asked why they were included. Like, not a radical question, not a tough question, and nobody can really tell me. I get a different answer every time I'm asked. Not in a classified setting, not in an unclassified setting. Nobody can still give me a straight answer. In fact, I've been given multiple conflicting reasons. This should be easy. This company is on a list because they are doing X, Y, and Z, and we have the proof. I've never heard that. Maybe it applies to, maybe some of the concerns apply to some of these companies. I have no idea. And nobody, including the people who wrote this bill, can give me a clear answer on the basic question, like why some entities are named and others are not. And then once they are named in this bill, the five companies that are named, I'm told that it is literally impossible for them to get off the list. So if one of these five companies does not belong on the list, too bad. Congress doesn't like you, and that's that. We have other standing committees that should have been involved in drafting this bill, quite frankly, that have expertise on these matters. Foreign affairs, energy and commerce, ways and means, homeland security, intelligence. They should have been consulted and at the table here. It should have been more than the select committee and the oversight committee. Let's do this in a better way. Let's create a fully vetted list that goes through an interagency process, not a flawed bill that has major enforcement problems that I believe will actually hurt us 
in opposing PRC's activities. So let's pull this bill or defeat this bill and let's get it, get, let's get this right. We have an opportunity to get it right. Let's get it right and we get it to the floor in a matter of days. With that, I reserve my time. The Chinese Communist Party does not get due process in America. The Biosecure Act will help ensure the biologic data of American patients and make sure that their data does not fall into the hands of our adversaries. We do this by prohibiting federal contracting with biotechnology companies of concern, companies and their subsidiaries that have overt and enduring ties with the CCP, or even using the equipment and services of these very companies. Our government has acted to keep the CCP out of our telecommunication networks and communication platforms. Now we must act to keep them away from our genomic and health data. China has publicly stated their desire to dominate the global biotechnology market by 2035. This is incredibly concerning given the Chinese Communist Party's national intelligence laws which require Chinese firms to share any requested data with the CCP. The existence of that law is enough to drive us forward with this bill. Because that law includes biotech companies that collect, test, and store American genomic data. That's why they are named. Because that is the risk to the American people and our national security. This legislation affects companies like the Beijing Genomics Institute, known as BGI a Chinese company that's collected DNA from millions around the world and used that data without consent for genomic projects conducted by the Chinese military. The 2021 Reuters report found DNA data collected from BGI's prenatal tests on women outside China has also been stored in China's government-funded gene database. Another Chinese company, Wuji Aptek, has sponsored events with China's military, reportedly, uh, with, re with IP reportedly stolen from the US, and jointly operated genetic collection sites with Chinese, uh, Chinese military. This is about protecting Americans from an adversary that will leave no stone unturned to get an upper hand over the United States of America and our people. Time and time again, these biotech companies have proven they are more than willing to do the bidding of the CCP. It's a proven relationship. We can't at the same time allow them to collect the private health information of millions of Americans. I've spent 25 years as an Army physician and combat surgeon. I've spent 10 years now on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Guess what? We don't bring our adversaries in for questioning. It doesn't work that way. As a matter of fact, when I've tried to do that, Mr. Speaker, on the select subcommittee on the pandemic, I asked the, the Chinese ambassador about certain scientists in China we would like to speak to. They didn't respond. It's time for Congress to take this step towards securing our national health security for every person in America, in every district of America. This is no joke, and it's just a start. It really needs to be just a start. And when my colleague said that he's not against this bill just only because he has a company wants to build in his district, but I guess it must be one of his reasons. He said it's not the only reason. Yeah, this, this is a very strange uh, debate, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, again, um, are we all comfortable uh, moving forward in a way that doesn't require any thoughtful or interagency investigation or, or process? Um, and, you know, and a process with integrity, by the way, will result in any of the bad actors getting on a list. I mean, that's what an interagency process is supposed to be about. And our friends still haven't really told me the criteria they use to get people on their blacklist, except the gentleman from Ohio just said, you know, if I, if, if, I want to make, if I want to say that you are bad, then you are on the list. That is not the way we do things in the United States. Uh, and I hope we never will do that in the United States. That's the way they do things uh, in China. Um, and again, as I sa said it before, there is, Wuxi Biologics is distinct from Wuxi Aptech. But in, in this, I guess, during China week, anything with the Chinese name 
um, is somehow suspect and somehow bad. I would also say I want to ask unanimous consent to insert into the record an article from Inside Health Policy entitled, Cutting Foreign Ties uh, Could Lead to Drug Supply Chain Disruptions, Industry Warns. Without objection, uh, so ordered. Yeah, and I, I point that out because we've got to be very careful on how we proceed to make sure we are going after truly bad actors so we don't kind of disrupt the supply chain in which we see a, a disruption um, in pharmaceuticals, which means higher prices and less availability. Um, that is something that ought to be talked about. It would be nice if the Energy and Commerce Committee uh, were part of this discussion, because I think that is, that is relevant. Again, I have no problem with holding anybody accountable. I would just like a process that has integrity. You know, with due respect to the gentleman who just spoke, you know, your word doesn't cut it. I want, I want a little bit more verification um, that, in fact, what we're doing is, is right. If the verification is there, I am with you. We can get there. Let's, we can do this in a better way, one that upholds our values and one that holds these companies accountable. Uh, and again, and, and that we could go in a way that would have broad bipartisan support. Uh, and with that, I reserve my time. Well, let me be clear. It is Congress's constitutional duty to write national security laws, and that includes the authority to investigate and name foreign adversary controlled companies in law because of the threat they pose to national security. And make no mistake, BGI, Wuxi Aptech, and Wuxi Biologics all pose unacceptable threats to national security. The evidence is clear and available to all members. And I have tremendous respect for my uh, colleague from Massachusetts who said he did due diligence that there are uh, complete separation between Wuxi Abtech and Wuxi Biologics. When the C CEO uh, of one is the board chair or on the board of the other. So to me, it just seems like there may be a little um, ignoring of some of the evidence. Courts have upheld laws in which Congress named Huawei and Kaspersky as national security threats and imposed prohibitions on their activities. And I'm confident that they will do the same for TikTok. When the evidence in front of Congress shows that foreign adversary companies are a particularly important or especially urgent threat to national security, it is Congress's job to act. Congress now has a duty to do exactly that. Please join me in supporting this vital legislation, and I yield back. Just to respond to the gentleman from Michigan, I didn't say I'd, I've done my due diligence uh, and that there's no connection. I said they're two separate entities. I said we should have a process in place that has integrity, that everyone has confidence in, to do the due diligence to make sure, in fact, that the companies that are being named are, in fact, deserve, do in fact deserve to be named. You know, experts, by the way, in, in my state tell me that we do not have enough domestic capacity to pick up the slack if the named companies were barred from doing business with the U.S. today. Clearly, we need to increase our domestic drug production, production capacity uh, and quality. I mean, the federal government should incentivize domestic biotech companies to manufacture products like active pharmaceutical ingredients and key starting materials to help ensure that the, the security of our, of our supply chains. We could, we could better support workforce development by providing funding for regional training centers and efforts to diversify the workforce. These are just some suggestions based on the feedback that I've received, but the bottom line is we need to make some changes to improve capacity at home. Um, so, you know, as we are going after the bad actors, let's also figure out how to increase capacity at home. And all I am saying, and let me repeat, if, a, if any or all of these companies are, are deserve to be sanctioned, I'm, I'm there. I just want a process that has integrity, that is worthy of this institution. And it seems to me it is not that difficult to get there, uh, but I guess in the effort to try to comply with China Week and to get a press release out, we're naming companies uh, without really any thorough and thoughtful process. And I have to tell you, I object to that. I worry that it's a slippery slope that will be, that will be replicated in other instances. And with that, I reserve. 